from a psychological level, dreaming, I mean, it's pretty ridiculous when you think about it, because last night you and I, when we went to sleep and we started dreaming, we became completely psychotic. And before you reject that sort of diagnosis of my nighttime psychosis, I'll give you five good reasons. When we dream, we start to see things which are not there. So you're hallucinating. You also believe things that couldn't possibly be true. So you're delusional. You get very confused about time and place and sometimes also person as well. So you're suffering from disorientation. You often have these wildly pendulum-like almost fluctuations in your emotions. And it's what psychiatrists will call being affectively labile or emotionally labile. And then how great you and I both woke up this morning and we forgot most, if not all of that dream experience. So we're suffering from amnesia. And if you, you know, if you were to experience any one of those five things while you're awake, you probably would be seeking some form of psychiatric intervention. But for reasons that we're now only starting to understand when it comes to the functions of dreaming, it's a perfectly normal biological and, and psychological process. The biological process is utterly interesting. We and others have done studies where we've been putting people inside of brain scanners and we let them go through the different stages of sleep and we let them go into REM sleep. Now, dreaming, if you use a loose definition, which is the report of any mental activity upon awakening, if you use that loose definition, you dream in almost every stage of sleep. But what most people think of when you say dreaming are REM sleep dreams. Those are the emotional, the narrative, the bizarre, the strange, that's really the state from which you dream. And when we look at that sleep stage inside of the MRI scanner, firstly, vast swaths of the visual cortex start lighting up in your brain. The motor regions of the brain erupt in activity. Emotional centers of the brain become active as well as memory centers of the brain. And in fact, some parts of your brain are up to 30% more active when you're in dream sleep than when you're awake, which is stunning to me because we often think of sleep as just this passive, non-conscious state. Metabolically, from the brain perspective, it's wild. But the freakish part is what happens to another region of your brain called the prefrontal cortex, and particularly the left and the right side, which sits just above your eyes. And it's particularly a region called the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, left and right side of the frontal lobe. That part of the brain, normally when it's active, acts like the CEO of the brain, that it makes high-level sort of executive top-down control decisions. And it allows you to have not just rational decisions, but volitional decisions. In other words, you're choosing to make that choice and you're choosing to do that action. That's part of the prefrontal cortex job. That part of the brain goes offline when we go into REM sleep. Your dorsolateral prefrontal cortex doesn't erupt with activity like many of these other regions. It is suppressed in its activity. And that, I think, is our current explanation as to why your dreams are so visual, so motoric, filled with past memories. They're also just highly emotional, but they're utterly bizarre, utterly erratic, and you have no volitional control. <laughs> the the prison guards have left the building and the prisoners are, are running amok. Your prefrontal cortex is down. Mm -hmm. And so that's one of the fascinating parts of dream sleep neurologically, as well as the body, by the way. I think we probably didn't discuss this before, but when you go into dream sleep, your brain paralyzes your body. You are completely limp. So if I were to come into the, to the bedroom and just pick you up during REM sleep, you would be like a rag doll all of your skeletal muscles are inhibited. And people don't need to worry, by the way, your involuntary skeletal muscles that control your respiration and your heart, they're not affected. But all of your voluntary muscles are because your brainstem, which is where the REM and non-REM mechanisms play out, not only does it beam an activating signal up into the dreaming brain, it sends one down the spinal cord and it paralyzes what's called the alpha motor neurons of the spinal cord that control your voluntary skeletal muscles. So you are locked into a physical incarceration during REM sleep, during dream sleep, which by the way, explains something called REM sleep paralysis upon awakening and adequately explains most alien abductions, but we don't need to go there. 